Welcome to the Three Haunted Podcast, where we bring you all things horror, supernatural, folklore, mythology, and all things that go bump in the night. Hey guys, this is your co-host Ashley Lunar Goddess, guerrilla girl filmmaker and horror-loving cinephile. I'm just your average pun-making swearwolf that loves to explore the spookier things in life. Hey everybody, I'm John Thomas, paranormal investigator, super smart ass, and film lover extraordinaire. What's up, goals, gals, and all of our spiritual tribe? And let me tell you, spiritual tribe, we are persistent tonight. This did not want us to go live, and yet here we are. We made it happen with a little bit of spunk <laughs> against Mercury. <laughs> <laughs> so tonight yeah just a lot tonight we'll be talking about the philosophy of spirituality and the spirituality of tribal people with our wow, with our returning guest Janice Regalon some of you listeners may recall Janice is our awesome 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 guest that talked to us about ancestral baggage welcome Janice Hi! Hi, everyone! Thanks for having me. <laughs> it's only like the fifth time she said hi to everybody, and just now everybody gets to hear it. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Everyone's wondering why is she singing it because you know what? It took us some effort and diligence and right. stubbornness mm-hmm. to get this live to work. So, yeah. yay. literally, my computer kept yeah. freezing. I kept, yeah, everything, <laughs> just, psh, all of it. Now, Janice, you have a very strong specialty with ancestral baggage. It's not your only gift, but it is one of your really good or really strong, unique specialties. So for those listeners who weren't able to tune in into that episode, can you give us a little bit of like a Cliff's Notes version of what that is? So if you are a generational cycle breaker, you hear that a lot, that you co- you come in and you're like breaking old beliefs from like that's been passed down from your family like they have a different way of doing things they have a different belief system and then here you are you come in and you have a whole different belief system and i help you clear those blockages that keeping you from really standing in your truth so it could be like blockages from your family from fear that's been passed down shame guilt If it left you feeling not good enough or hiding or any of those limiting beliefs or those limiting, um, like, past generational things, and then now you're experiencing it now in your life and you want to break these cycles, it's pretty much what it is in a nutshell. So a generational cycle breaker. That has a big impact. Um, I don't think people always, like, they hear metaphysical and they're just like, oh, that doesn't apply to me. My family's good, but we don't always realize that, like, we may have had a really, um, what we consider typical childhood and upbringing, not realizing that our parents maybe didn't or their parents didn't. And so what they experienced caused trauma within them that helped kind of shape how they raised us. So it it does impact us, even if we don't think it did. Now, um, you don't have to believe in being psychic or being any of these things for those things to be very real and present. Yeah. You don't just know that like, let's say you are having struggle with some areas in your life and you don't like it. You know what I mean? And you tried everything to try and change it. Right. But then it's still something there's lingering on and you just don't know exactly what it is. Well, 99.9% of the time it's that, that is, coming down <laughs> what I find so a lot of my clients do, don't come to me saying hey I have this ancestral thing no 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 no. they come to me like hey I can't sleep <laughs> or I'm having trouble um, creating abundance in my life or I want to build a relationship a better relationship with myself uh, or or any of those certain situations they don't straight up say hey i got this ancestral thing that happened to me like passing down that i noted from my great 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 like five generations before no 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 so these things normally show up in those other signs like lack of sleep i get a lot you know or worrying a lot with a lot of mothers you know worrying 
or if you find yourself like a people pleaser or if you're constantly putting other people's needs or wants before your own or you know feeling like you're responsible for everything like what you know a lot of females end up doing you know as if they have families you know they feel like everything's all on top of you and they have the hard time to asking for support or they're having a hard time like speaking their truth so a lot of these things are just the surface level of what's really deeper rooted dumb so that's what i help you with that deeper stuff that where you're unconscious from and then that's why those things are showing up in your life yeah and i know um listeners have heard me talk about in the past my fear my fear of the supernatural my fear of gifts my fear of the paranormal and so um, when my mom was visiting me I listened to the episode with her to see how she would respond to it and it was amazing to see how quickly she connected to what you were saying and then halfway through just being completely impacted and moved by it like yes yes she is so right yes this is true oh my gosh, I didn't realize that until right now. And that's amazing. Like to be able to impact my mom like that, like that was pretty powerful. Like I told you when I reached out to you, it felt like a very powerful moment for her. And and since then, she's been like sharing it like with the world. She's like, you got to listen to this and you need to listen to this. And our family will make so much more sense if we listen to it. And I'm just like, that. that is so great. I love that she was able to connect with that. Yeah, I love it too because I bet you that it also helps your relationship with your mother by her doing this, by her like get like being all in and like wow and getting her awareness from it i bet it helped you and her build a better relationship from it absolutely yeah i i do feel like just by her hearing it and kind of letting go of that part of her that's like anxious Mm -hmm. helped me feel almost like some of my anxiety i'm holding I kind of breathed out. And I was like, where did that come from? When was I holding that? How did that? But just seeing her release that, I suddenly was like, whoa, I feel a little lighter too. Yes. <laughs> it was yes. pretty interesting. <laughs> yes. That is the after effect. That's the healing that happens when that when you heal the lineage. She was able to let go. You felt that impact. And you were able to, so it's like this domino effect that happens and you're healing the past with your mom, you're healing the present with you, and now you have children and now they can have a, that different experience without that info, without that, you know? So it's be- that's the beauty part about healing the ancestral work. Yeah, and I think the fact that the just by hearing these things, just by understanding a little more about like what drives us, right? Like, hey, your fear might be rooted in how your parents reacted to these topics or how they were maybe treated about those topics now impacts you inadvertently because they didn't want you to go through that. It it really, just by even just hearing that and understanding it, it's like, oh, I understand it, and that helps release some of the trauma. It's not like you have to do anything special extra. It's just no. just knowing that's what drive is driving that really helps. It really is just – it was lovely. I just want to say it was really moving. As silly as that sounds, I was like, my mama's feeling like a release, and so I feel great, and yay, mama. <laughs> yes. Just hearing you talk – just hearing you say something about it made me tear up. I'm like, oh. But like, yeah, that's no, awesome. He, it was, and he can. That's awesome because now John felt that, and he felt that healing, and he, you know, what your experience was, and he has. He's not even related to you, but on some level, he's getting that healing as well. Mm-hmm. You know, on an energetic level, and we connect on these deeper energetic levels. And so even though, like, his experience in his life was different than your relationship was, but he's still getting that. He still gets to resonate with that and get some healing, and he, he felt that. That's powerful right there. I'm just a big old softy. 
Well, I love it. I do too. And I think we can all relate, right? We can all relate to this idea that there is something about us that maybe isn't like the stereotypical norm or the like traditional, this is society, society accepts it. And so when we feel like there's something in us that is like stands out and doesn't fit in, we do carry a sense of like shame or embarrassment with it, right? And so I feel like when a parent is like, oh, I get it. I may not feel what you feel. I may not experience what you experience, but I get you're experiencing it. And I understand it like, oh my gosh, that makes such a difference. And yeah. It's a beautiful thing when they don't need to quite understand what you're saying, exactly what you're saying. They don't need to quite exactly need to know exactly verbatim what happened. The the part is that you get to be seen, you get to be heard, you get to be valued. And that's the most important part of it. You were able to see your mother. And that's exactly what you said. You feel seen. And yes, being able to see her back. Because sometimes we're so focused on us, right? Like, how is she going to receive me? How is she going to receive this? And like, am I going to be ridiculed? And instead, it's like seeing her in that moment process. Is that why? I, oh my gosh, that's why I feel this way. That's why I'm scared. Yeah. That's why I compassion. Yeah, seeing that in her, it's like, oh my gosh, I didn't know you were carrying that. I didn't know you experienced that. So it it turns it around, right? I give compassion yeah. to her and understanding to her and see her in a way that yeah. I didn't. And so, oh my gosh, and anyone else in her family got to see her either. I bet not even her own parents got to see her in that light either. But to just to have another soul, maybe your friend or maybe it be your, you know, child or your aunt or your uncle just to see, just to see you. That's it. And that's our deep core in, in spiritual sense. That's as a soul. That's what we want from each other just to be seen. Yeah. And not a lot of times we we are raised that way because our families are always like constantly in worry, lack, trying to make things happen, trying to you know get it get it done, trying to survive, right? So then there's not a lot of time or break that they can actually like put their shit on hold, put it in the back burner, and really see okay your child, your person in front of you, or a friend really just needs a hello, really just needs maybe a hug, or maybe just feel like oh I. I get you, you know, you don't have to fix them. You don't have to do anything, but just, just that acknowledgement alone, it sends ripple effects, ripple effects into the energetic world and the spiritual world. I think too, as parents, oftentimes we do the opposite of what we mean to when we're trying to protect our children. So we think the world's not ready to accept you for your gifts. The world's not ready to care for you and be compassionate and hold you in a space that's going to respect, understand, and see those things. And so then it's like, well, now I need to protect you as hard as possible, so don't talk about it. It almost reminds me, as silly as it sounds, as Frozen. Like with Elsa, like her parents, her mom was trying to protect her and her dad was, but really what they did was hurt them by not helping her learn her gifts and embrace and care for them. And they meant well, but really over protecting her in that way really caused all those gifts to be just completely spiraled out, right? So I feel like we don't want to frozen our kids. (laughs) And we're in an age where it's actually becoming really like accepted, it's not as weird, right? It's not as like taboo to say, yeah, I feel this. Um, yeah, I experienced that. And and I think any of us that grew up in the 80s or prior to, we still feel that, that knee-jerk reaction. Like, well, I don't want to say that I feel energy. I don't want to say that I feel people's emotions. People are going to think I'm weird. But now it's like I still hesitate with that, but I'm getting more comfortable saying, yes, I do feel that. Yes, I do sense that and that's just that is what it is I am who I am yeah you know every generation like I was just with my family last night 
And it, you're talking about generations from, I was with an 88 year old, my aunt, she's 88, she's old, but she likes to be in a you know, nosy body and be in everybody's business. So a lot of my, my mom, they know this about her, but they don't say anything because it's shame, right? You don't talk up. You don't say anything to the older people. You just let them go. You just let them be, right? right. In our generation, we were taught, like, their generation was taught, like, kids was to be seen but not heard. So yep. they would keep a lot of this stuff in. So last night, she asked me a question, this 88-year-old um, aunt. And I looked at her. I go, mind your own business. And my mom and my aunt are like, oh, that's so rude. How dare you tell her? I go, what? You guys think about it. I just say, mind your own business. <laughs> and it was great. I did feel like uh, like I offended her. But in the same sense, I go, auntie, I was just going to go sit over there and go talk to my cousin. You know what I mean? But I was like, mind your own business. I went like that to her. And I grabbed my stuff and I walked away. <laughs> it's a kuleana, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, mind your own business, Kuliana. But we you don't let me deal it, with my know? business. I'm gonna deal with your. You right. deal with your business, right? But with the generation that I was raised with, my mom, my mom was like, "You don't talk up to your elders. You don't say stuff like that." You know what I mean? So they, so even though they think it, and when she walks away, they're gonna talk shit. But then I was like, "Well, I'm just gonna say it because this is what I feel." You know what I mean? But I'm not doing it to hurt her. Um, she doesn't know that's what she's doing. So, yeah, I'm just like, hey, just mind your own business. But that's the thing. That's the thing. Like things that started probably in a positive, like I want to protect my child or reverence yep. in a lot of cultures. Reverence for your elders means not speaking, you know, talking back to them, not opposing right. them, not negating them. But at some point that perpetuates like toxic behaviors and we're absorbing yes. that toxicity. We're absorbing that like negative energy and sometimes borderline abuse like today I'm fat to tomorrow I'm anorexic because they're paying way too much attention to my weight and at some point it's just like you know what I am who I am I'm a circle I'm a sphere I'm a pole I'm all the shapes I'm living life right let's just focus on who we are and so um I love I love that you stood up in a way that was like I'm all for respect your elders, but not at the expense of your own energy, not at no. the expense of your own mental or emotional health. And that's where I think boundaries need to be kind of redefined, especially in a lot of cultures that tend to be rooted in big families, like yeah. 50 plus people at any time together. That needs to be redefined. You can show respect, but still respect yourself, respect your energy, your mental health. Absolutely. Maybe that's how they were treated. So they don't, I know that because they don't know any better. And, you know, when I told her that, I was just, I did it. It's the thing, it's coming from a place of neutrality. When you're neutral, because you're very clear and grounded in who you are, it makes it easier for you to say what you need to say without trying to hurt the other person. I was just calling her out on her shit. And she, and normally nobody would call you out on your shit when you're like that. So they just let you go. And I'm just like, well, I'm not going to stand here and let, you know, just let her go because she's 88 years old. No, you know, but I gave her still respect with, with being neutral. I wasn't trying to hurt her or any of that. And then after that, my family went away. But, but when she left, she went home. She gave me the biggest hug and she goes, oh, I love you. And then like, she was like, amazing. And everybody like looked at me and her and was like, wow, how did you get to, her? how did you get through to her? Because she's a very stubborn old lady. She really is. She can be something else. But they looked at me and her like, how did you guys, how did you get through her? And I was like, because I see her for who she is and I get it, but I'm not going to let her. Do that to me. <laughs> That's where I have the boundary there. And I'm going to stop it right there. Yeah. our uh, One of our listeners says, we are all allowed to have boundaries. And I completely agree. And that is especially, and I say especially for this reason, but that is especially important to have boundaries with your family. I think that's more important than having um, those strict boundaries with strangers. The reason I say that is because with strangers, we're more inclined to be adamant about our boundaries like and protect them. If someone disrespects them, we're more inclined to be like, peace out. 
but I feel like with family members, if we set, if, if we set boundaries, uh, because I think oftentimes we're taught not to when we're young, but like if we set boundaries, I feel like we're more inclined to let family members disrespect those boundaries because we think, well, that's family. I guess that, right. you know, I have to take that or I guess that's okay and because it's grandma or it's great aunt or it's, you know, anyone yeah. older than me and it's like, nope, yeah. you don't have to take that. You don't have to like, like you said, you don't have to come from a negative place and be hurtful, but you can absolutely stand up for yourself and say, that's my boundary you're not respecting. That's not okay. Yeah. And she, once I did that, I seen her energy like taken back. And but she still engaged with me. She still like hugged me after she st- she respected me. You know, I got respect from her and everyone else that was there at the party seeing that, you know, and I was like, okay, I'm setting this example on how, you know, as a woman, as a female in a family, because sometimes in a family, we play roles, right? We have different roles that we play. And sometimes we hide ourselves or minimize ourselves to make the other ones comfortable because it's family, because it's more charged. Yes. Okay. So this is why I like to practice. If you can set boundaries with your, your family, you can set boundaries with your boss. You can set boundaries with your friends. You can set boundaries with your kids because your family is going to be the most charged. Okay. Yes. They're going to be activate you and trigger you. To, so when you can work your issues through with your family and setting these out, you can do this anywhere, yes. anywhere. Yes. If and you this can is stand the part about family, it. You can stand up to anybody else. Yes. And this is why ancestral clearing, what I do is I help you do that with your family to clear these deeper seated rooted so that, you know, you can change it. Like last night, I changed that with this, with my aunt. You know, and I did it in front of my mom and my aunt and my other, you know, all these people who've known me since I was younger. And so they're like, whoa, you know, even to the point, this lady was telling me, oh, do you have a boyfriend? I go, no, I'm holding out is what I told her. She's like, oh, I go, how come you have a boyfriend? And my mom's like, you're asking it in here. Like, yeah, I go, yeah, why she can ask me, I can ask her. You got a boyfriend? (laughs) You got what? (laughs) Yeah, and then she's like, oh, no, no. Like, I had such a great conversation with her, you know? And I was, like, laughing with her, and everybody's like, wow, you guys are, like, having a good time. Like, what are you guys yep. talking about, <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah, it we always great. tease my... We always tease my grandma. She's 85, 83. I don't know. She's in her 80s. We, she's been married twice, maybe more than that. I don't know. But we keep teasing her. Hey, when are you going to get the next guy? She's like, oh, no, I'm too old for that crap. I'm like, no, you're not. You got like 20 more years. You you can spend 20 more years with somebody. Come on. She's like, no, I don't want another boyfriend. I was like, all right, right. whatever. You're lost. <laughs> Tinder. Tinder. Tell her. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> do they have an old people Tinder? Like- they probably do. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, when she was leaving, I was like, I'm going to set you up a Tinder account. And she's like, okay. And she like, what? I like that she was down with it. She said, okay. Um, <laughs> you know, one of our viewers, they did say, you know, it's not uh, always easy talking to your family to assert those boundaries like that and speaking so freely. And you're right. And not every person is going to respond like Janice's aunt and be receptive to those boundaries. But that's where you want to ask yourself, if that person is only going to be in my life and around me, if they can be toxic towards me, if they can be um, consistently abusing my boundaries, then is that a person who truly values me and needs to be there? Because ultimately, our like we can say metaphysical and that somehow displaces from who we are, but it's not. That's every part of us. It's like we have our emotional, our spiritual, our mental, our physical bodies. We have all of these things that have to be working together for us to truly feel balanced. And so if someone comes in and is like railroading that and does not care and they expect you to absorb it and put up with it because of whatever reason that they want to apply to it, then that's a person I feel like maybe doesn't need to be around you. That doesn't mean permanently. People grow and learn lessons, right? And they realize their behaviors are hurting others. But in the meantime, while they're figuring out their bullshit or shit, whatever, maybe you don't let them be around you so that you don't absorb that because ultimately that is going to hurt you in more than just the 
typical realms we can think of. Absolutely. Like there was times where I did not want to see my mother. I didn't want nothing to her at all in my life at all. But I also knew I couldn't shut her out either. So I have to find a way it's in me that I can still be loving and opening it towards my mother without shutting down because in the end she is my mother. So once I developed like these really strong energetic boundaries and set my energy of the goal that I want this relationship relationship to be. And I held that relationship and I held that energy so strongly in my energy field. My mom's whatever was going on with my mom could not infect what was going on between her and build that relationship. So our relationship has become leaps and bounds because of that. And I got to see my mother change because of that because I was holding this strong boundaries that it forced her to, if she wanted to be in my life, like, and I didn't have to communicate with her. It wasn't all physical verbally. It was like an energy level. When I said that energy, energy, my mom was forced to either change her ways or she spirit is going to just take her out because her alignment isn't aligned with me. So spirit's just going to take her out. I didn't have to do anything. Your spirit's a gangster taking out your mama. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. (laughs) Yeah. Oh yeah. No, no, it has. It has. You know, like there, as I said, there was times that I did not want her in my life. And I like, I was like, you can't have that. But then I knew down in the end, is that truly what I wanted? Is that what I wanted regardless, you know? And I was like, no, okay, well, spirit, show me a different way. Show me what I need to do in order for me to accomplish this. You know, we say we set intentions and all that, but it's really setting that energy. What is it that you want? the outcome to be and you know what it took me a while but I'm there finally with my mother and she knows she's clearly knows like any of those shady stuff it's gonna like I ain't not gonna stand up for it my gangster spirit's gonna take you out again (laughs) yeah and she knows it she knows it you know I think it's important too when we talk about like removing individuals from your close world, that doesn't necessarily mean cutting people off in anger. I think you can absolutely let people go with love. And that doesn't mean let people go, like, I'm going to block your number and I'm going to, like, you know. Yeah, it could be just as much as letting them go internally. Like, internally, I love you, but I'm not going to let you have that access to hurting me anymore. I'm not going to let you be able to access my energy that way anymore. It is no longer accessible to you. And I love you and I wish you well, but you aren't entitled to that vulnerable space within me until you show that that is something you are capable of actually being considerate of. So let them go with love. Right. <laughs> like her. Yeah, it's all. She cut that off. See ya. <laughs> You know, it's all in, it's all in like just be neutral. Yeah. You know, is like coming from a place of neutrality of regardless of what happens, you're not attached to the outcome on that. And just you be, and you know that you are doing what is best for you. But at the same time, you're not going to sit there and not do the work and just sit in there and just be in victim or be in blame because that doesn't solve anything. You know what I mean? That that doesn't. So if you're constantly it's like, well, she did this to me or this happened or da 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 da. Well, of course, it you can't reconcile because that energy is in between there. You know? So it's really, it comes from a place of you working your energy and you working your space. Like if I sat in victim through what I had gone through with my mother as a child, there was no way that I could be able to sit with her, or hang out with her, or be with her, or even go to a party with the rest of my family, you know. But once you, once I transformed being victimized and being in blame and shame and self-pity and just, you know, it, all of those emotions that I had towards my mother, then, you know, we wouldn't be able to be as close as we are now. So there's also that part, too, you know. Yeah, I think when we oftentimes too, I think when we stay in that mode of we are the victim of our life, um, 
I, I think that we don't always, always realize like we're actually kind of poisoning ourselves. We are internalizing and keeping ourselves in that space of like they did this to me and that did that to me. And it's like, feel that, feel that for a moment. Like say that to yourself and say, they did this to me. What does your energy do? Where in your body do you feel tightened up in anxiety and like anger? And it's like, that's what you're continuing to cycle through your entire body when you stay in that space. And it's not easy. It's not easy when you do feel betrayed or hurt to, to leave that space. But think about when you are staying in that space, maybe for longer than you want to be that I'm poisoning myself. I may be mad at these people, but I'm actually drinking the poison by doing that and hurting myself. I don't want to do that to myself. I'm going to let them go, but not because they deserve it, but because I deserve it. I deserve to let it go because I don't deserve to hurt anymore. Because that still keeps oh, that, yeah. that, that going. It's sucky. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I get, I give you, it's sucky. It's sucky. I get a lot of people like, I cut these people out of my life. Okay. They cut them out of anger, but they're still holding the hurt in their energy field. So here, imagine you're holding the hurt in your energy field, even though these people are not in your life because you cut them out. Guess what? Because you're still holding on to this, you're going to attract the same people just like that because you need to learn that lesson of healing that. So when you keep holding on, like what you were saying, when you keep holding on your energetic field, of whatever that is, you may have left those people and you may have walked away from them and cut them out and go, guess what? You're going to attract the same amount, same people with that same energy because you need to work that out still. Yeah. You're not healed. That law of attraction. Because <laughs> you hold it on to it. And we do it on such deep subconscious levels that we are not aware of, you know, and it's it's a shame because now you're, now you're just cutting yourself off from all of these amazing people that you could have in your life and you just don't know that I think you're also able to identify those behaviors if you're able to move past the um I think once you get to that space of calmness someone in the uh, chat referenced I don't feel bad for her I don't resent her just calmness when you reach that point of calmness I think is when you're also able to identify that much easier in other individuals as well, or maybe in the same individual, yeah. like, oh, I see you're up to that again. And then you can kind of displace yourself from that situation a lot easier. Um, or in new individuals, it's like, oh, I know that. I know those patterns of behaviors and flags. I'm going to keep myself from that as well. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it's, it's, that is like the true true like key or the special sauce of like deeply healing is when you can like because you come together and everything gets kind of tangly right they kind of get all tangled up and then all of a sudden when you separate you got to separate from that energy and unmatch from that and completely separate but when if you're still attached to that in some level it's hard to really see the bigger picture and so that you can get to this calmness you can get to this grounded state and get clarity on what you need in this next step. So you can be fully supported by spirit, God, universe, source, whoever you connect to that can help you and support you along that journey, support you on this decision. There's so many times I have to let go, not, you know, people in my life, but then unmatch from that so that I can see the bigger picture be like, oh, okay. I get that. I get the lesson. I get what I get it. Okay, cool. Now I get to shift that. And then of course, if they come back, there's people who come back in my life, but they can't come back in that same energy. They can't come back in that same way. I'm sorry. And if that is there, they're going to get pulled out again. There's so many times that happen. They get pulled out again, you know? So that's okay too. Yeah. I think you can actually also when you can kind of find that calm space where you can't be rocked, right? When you find your balance and someone does repeat that behavior, like you said, they do it again and you're just like, oh, I know that, but it doesn't hurt you the same. It doesn't throw you off and anger you the same because you're, you've already let go of that behavior. You've accepted that person is, they tend to do that. I accept yeah. that's part of what they bring right now. It's great if they don't, but I accept that that may be something that resurfaces. It probably has nothing to do with me. It's a them problem. 
And yes. <laughs> so it doesn't rock you as much. <laughs> no. It reminds yeah. me of that TikTok That's all you, video. Boo, right? That's, you're right. That's all you, boo. You do you, you know? <laughs> I know. I love it. I love that. <laughs> There's like this TikTok video where this person's thinking about that. That's a them problem. Ain't got nothing to do with you. <laughs> I love that. I'm gonna have to watch that. <laughs> I'll, I'll send it to you. I will because it's so fun. <laughs> I bet. Yeah, it's a great just to have that because you're like, okay, I get it. And you can come and like once you see that bigger picture, it's so awesome because then you get to see them for okay, that's the, that's what they're going through. That's their lessons. That's what they, they, and again, that's the you problem. It sounds like a personal problem to me. You know, how can I support you in this? You know, then you can really be that support for them. But I won't support you if they want, if they want, that's a no. Exactly. (laughs) Totally. I'm not going to support you in the douchey thing, but you do that. But I was like, I had a client just like that. She had an ex-husband. And then, you know, it really got her off her rocker, like what you were saying. Like, it got her off her rocker. And she's done a lot of self-work on her herself for the five years. And even that little text comment really set her off. So, you know, helping her kind of come back to herself and then helping her come up with, like, something to say back, but not in a way that is going to trigger the situation and escalate it to even more, but come to a solution. Once we kind of figured what that was and what that looked like, she practiced it a little bit, what she, how she was going to say it so she can be in her power and be that clarity and groundedness that she needed so that she can say this with her, uh, within her power. Ever since then, it's never happened to her ever again. He doesn't text her the same energy like that anymore. It's completely gone. He does not do that. Yeah, I think once you find your balance and your strength against something and people realize they can't rock you. Because oftentimes people do those things oh, yeah. because it it's it's that energy they're feeding off of, right? That anger, that sadness, that stuff they're feeding off of that they brought onto you. And so when you are suddenly not shakable, you are not movable, it doesn't they can't feed off of it the same way. And so it's like, oh, Okay. And and you see it less and less because it's it's hard to pick on something that can't be picked on. <laughs> exactly. Totally. Yeah, I like to look at it like when that situation like that happens and I do get shaked or I do get, you know, a little off or any of my clients, I like to look at those as like, okay, what is it in me that I need to heal? that I need to learn that that is showing me this. What is that mirror? What is that reflecting to me? It has nothing to do with them and their shadiness, you know, their douchiness or whatever. It has to do with me. What is inside of me that they're showing me that I need to reclaim? Yeah. And so I work on it on that level. The verse is like, oh, these people are doing it to me. That's their problem. Da, 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 da. No. Okay, they're there for a reason. They showed it to you for something. <laughs> Just there's a lesson. After, there's a lesson there. And once you can see that as a lesson, then versus, oh, they're doing this to me and being in that, you know, self-victimizing or blaming, then you can really come to that place of, okay, what is that showing me? What is it reflecting me? Where is it somewhere inside of me that I need to heal? I need to claim. I need to learn. So that I can move past on that. Release whatever the hell that is. You know, create space for what you want to bring in. Remove it. Create space for what you want to create and heal and bring in. And move about. Move along, you know. Yeah, I think having so many people that can impact us that way. Um, we're accidentally giving away pieces of our power to everybody. So we're kind of splitting ourselves, right? And we stay existing that way. And by pulling it back, reclaiming your power is essentially becoming kind of more whole again, right? We take back those pieces of ourselves that we've pulled away and we recall our power. And I think that just helps us be even stronger and even more empowered to our boundaries and empowered to our self-care. Absolutely. That's where you build that internal strength. Like you can't be rocked feeling what you were saying. But sometimes those things are because of some kind of ancestral 
um, programming that's been inside of you. Like someone to it telling you like, oh, we're, we don't say anything because we're, women are supposed to be seen, not heard. Or we shouldn't say that because if we say this, then you'll be rude or you'll be too much or you'll be, you know, whatever that means. But that could have been passed down. So that's why we don't say these things. That's why we don't have that power to do that. Because we have that in our mind saying, like, oh, if I say this, then I'm going to upset someone or they're not going to accept me or they're not, you know, whatever, you know, what we create that keeps us or blocks us from that. So. I definitely learned that voice. Learn that voice. I feel like most people mm-hmm. go throughout with just like their throat chakra completely blocked because they don't know how to speak their truth. They don't know how to connect with their boundaries and their wants and their no. needs. And it's like, man, when you start to learn to use that in a way that's non-harming. And I say that loosely um, because some people think, well, I'm harming others if I stand up to them. No. In a way that's not intentionally cruel, then I think that's when you really can start connect to connect everything, to balance everything. Yeah. Men and women too. Like I'm finding Absolutely. a lot of men. I, I'm, I'm finding more and more a lot of men um, is having also fish chakra, throat chakra. They can't fully express themselves either i'm finding more and more men standing up now and it's saying that and that's awesome yeah i think a lot of women we like suppress the throat chakra in speaking about our personal boundaries and i find that society kind of conditions our men to suppress their throat chakra when they're speaking about their emotions like this Mm -hmm. hurt me this doesn't feel good to me this is painful Mm -hmm. and like grief and all of those heartbreak things like that like they have to keep suppressing that and it's like man we could all do with a little like throat chakra love (laughs) (laughs) yeah we all can (laughs) yeah that's something that i'm working with my son he's 25 and i tell him like when i ask him hey do you want to go do this with me blah blah i could tell like he's trying to like he doesn't want to tell me that he doesn't want to go so i tell him i always have to remind him like hey if this is something you don't want to do just say it's okay it, it, you, you have complete permission to say, like, you know what, mom, I just want to just stay in and sleep today. I don't want to go. I'm like, okay, great. Thank you for communicating, you know. But even with him, like, I'm I'm working with him to, so that he can communicate, you know, to a female, especially, especially for um, his mother, which is, a, he gave his, you know, power a lot to me because I'm his mother, right? So for him to be able to stand in his power and and say something, but also being heard and seen in that way, be like, okay, I get it. Enjoy your day. Have a great rest. I'll talk to you later. That's awesome. You know what I mean? It, it was great. Like yesterday I called him and said, like, hey, we're going to have the family thing. I'm coming into town. He goes, you know, I'm, so I'm taking it that you're not going to come is what I texted. Because I called. He didn't answer. So I texted to have communication and he goes yeah mom I'm just tired and I've been working a lot so I'm just gonna be home I go okay great well enjoy your nap your rest time if there's anything you need let me know I'll be in town I love you and I just left it be that's it and that's super important I think that um with those kind of multicultural multi you know age families that they there is expe- expectations, right? We do get raised with expectations that um, it's the family first as a whole over the the health of the individual. But it is very important to, because we see mental and emotional health is a very big issue these days with everybody. No matter whether you're you know, what your background is, it is important to start taking stock of your body. How am I feeling in this moment? How is my mind? How is my heart? And if something is not good for you, being able to say, I can't handle that today. And that's okay. That's okay. People forget that that's okay part. I'm not really up for that today. And that's okay. So that's super important. Yeah. And I think that people have a really hard time saying that they're not okay emotionally and mentally. So they'd rather say, you know, I just don't want to, or they don't want to say anything for for me. I'm like, you know what? If it feels personal to you and you don't want to say, that's not in my, you know, capacity today, that's okay. 
it's okay not right. to be vulnerable in that mm-hmm. space if you don't feel that way or if you don't feel that you want to share that. But also know it is absolutely okay to normalize the mental and emotional subjects to say, you know what? I'm my energy can't take that today. My especially uh, yeah, after I'm, the last two years that we've all had. Like Yeah, yeah. we've all had a really hard <laughs> yeah. time. And so let's normalize those conversations because it affects your energy. It affects yes. the three D world and the metaphysical world. So because yes. it's all one, right? We as it's much as solid. we separate the topics, it's all one. So it's okay to say it's not for me today. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's so important, but if if there is a blockage there that is blocking you, even though you want to say it, but then you can't, and it's keeping you stuck, and it's keeping you like not moving, progressing forward, then that's kind of where the deeper core issue is could be because you're not allowed to speak and to be heard, or it could be put it, uh, putting other people first in your own. So it could be on multiple layers, you know, on that. But yeah, the, that would be down to the core root of like, yeah, today's, uh, today is just, I need me time today. You know, and um, a thing that I like to always encourage is um, no matter where you're at, moments can feel like an eternity, right? And so I always encourage people throughout the day to take like take a pause. A pause can be just a moment. We all have a moment. Pause. Hard stop. Whatever it is you're doing, pause, hard stop. Take a moment to really look inside. How am I doing right now? Am I okay? How's my heart? How's my mind? How is how's my body? Because we go, 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 go. Like you said earlier, we're go, 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 baby. Go, go, go. That we may not realize we're pushing ourselves past a limit we should be at. So really taking moments, because self-care, right? People think self, self-care has to be like three hours of whatever extended. Self-care can be taking just a moment, three times a day, and pausing and saying, how am I? How am I right now? Because maybe I need longer than a moment. Maybe I need to go for a walk. Maybe I need to listen to my favorite song. Maybe I need to take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. But wherever I'm at, how am I doing? Because no one else is going to check in for you. So (laughs) you got to check in for you. And be okay with like, you're a human, first of all. And it's going to be ugly. It's going to be messy. Humans are messy. You know, and just like, Check in and be okay. Like, laugh at yourself about it. Like, this morning, I was like, I don't even know how I'm going to do this. And I realized that it was just that energetic hangover from being with my family all day yesterday. So I was like, oh, okay. That's just the hangover from all of that energetically. And then I was like, okay, cool. Because I this is, this is me. This is, I need to show up. This is what I want to do. And so, yeah, this is what I want. So, it was, It felt good to like understand that and then separate it and then come here. But that pause, man, whoo, it's so important, so important. And just loving that hot mess, you know? <laughs> and learn to laugh at yourself. Oh, my gosh. I used to take, when I first started doing a lot of yoga, I was taking myself way too seriously. I thought I had to look like my neighbor or the person in front of okay. me or whatever. And it's like... Yoga was having no benefit on me because I was so stressed that I had to look like or be like everyone else. And there was a teacher that like told me at some point, not me, but the whole class, um, as we're facing the mirrors, trying to balance, um, she's like, all right, everybody now look forward in the mirror. And we all are looking like, what's she going to have us correct? She's like, now make the silliest face at yourself that you can. And we're like, what? She's like, because you're taking this too seriously. (laughs) And she's like, yoga is for calming you. It's for finding that balance. But if you find you're stressing over being in the perfect pose or the perfect whatever you think it needs to be, shake it off. Throw it off. Hell yeah. Like laugh at yourself, have fun with yourself. And so from that point on, no matter what yoga class, whether I'm home alone or in a class, if I'm like in a balance, trying to balance and I find myself getting frustrated with myself, I'm like, hold on, where's my mirror? (laughs) 
<laughs> and I will totally make a face at myself or like do something to make myself laugh because I'm like, all right, yeah. I'm getting into the zone where this no longer helps me. So the same with anything else in life. If you're going through yeah. life and you find you are sick to your stomach and it is no longer a journey that's benefiting you. Try and find a moment to like, right. w- what makes you laugh? Maybe it's a silly face. Maybe it's right. something else. Or just say, fuck Mercury, like what John said. Yeah, today, fuck Mercury. Get on. <laughs> Except he said that to, to do that in a very specific place. <laughs> yes, I did. Like the backseat of a Volkswagen. <laughs> yes. Backseat of a Volkswagen. Prom night, yes, man. Exactly. Take Mercury out. <laughs> Man, life is going to be hard. Life is going to be stressful. Why not make yourself laugh? And for those who don't know what to laugh about, just remember John. John and the Mercury in the back of a Volkswagen. (laughs) Now, Denise, I had a question for you. Last episode you were on, you had done a reading for me. And I was wondering, I know we're live, so this might be something more personal. Would you be potentially willing to do one for John? Yeah. I don't know if you want to do that off live though, or do you, does it, it doesn't matter? matter. Well, let's ask John. <laughs> oh yeah. That's, well, I wanted to check with you first because it's your gifts, but then we can also check with John. Yeah. I was like, let's ask John. Right. I don't know. If you're right. No, I don't, I don't mind. No, that's fine. Okay, cool. Yeah. I don't mind, but yeah, let's just, let's just wrangle John into this. <laughs> You're doing it, don't matter what. Do it. No, do it. Fine. Yeah, no, I would love to do it. Yes, absolutely. So, right now? Whenever, Whenever yeah. you're ready. Okay, okay, <laughs> I'm ready. Okay, hold on. Just kidding. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. All right, so. Maybe blessing, grace, All right. So, the first thing that I noticed, so, what I'm doing is, for those of you guys who are watching or listening, I'm just saying hello to John as a spirit and where he is right now on his path. So I'm just going to do a little when where he is. So right now, John, when I t- see you as a spirit, you are working through some stuff, some big, big stuff. You just, you are dumping. So you're like at this Days right now, like, what am I gonna do with all this shit? <laughs> it's like you cleared it, but then it's like, okay, it's here. Now, fucking what? Now, what? What do I do? So, anywho, so that's kind of where I see where you're at um, on your soul journey right now. I wanna ask your spirit why. <laughs> because when I say hello to that, it just looks like you're just letting go, just. Like, I don't want to deal with this anymore. I don't want to do this in this way anymore. I don't, Like, I just, no. And so that's kind of, you've been slowly unpacking your life. And you've been just slowly unpacking and like, okay, does this work for me anymore? Does this work for me anymore? Do I even like this anymore? The hell am I going to do with this? Where did this come from? Like, you've been doing this for this past year, actually. Um, so this year, when I see you, you've gotten it out. Like, you got it all boxed up. You got it out. But you just don't know what to do with it. You don't know how to sort it. You don't know what, like, like what. So, and you can stop me at any time if you have any questions or anything. Okay. Okay, so, I'm just going to ramble. Okay, so. Ramble away. <laughs> so, I don't know if that's resonating with you or pertinent to you where you are right now, but that's kind of Oh, yeah, no, definitely. Not only, you know up there but like in real life too so it's all <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah it's everywhere like you went through your whole life your whole entire life and this is what you've been doing your throughout your whole life right. like on a physical level as well as an energetic level like it's like tangent and it's huge it's huge for you because what you're doing is you're creating this space but you're not sure what you want to create with this new space right you cleared all this stuff up but now what now what do you want to have what this is where you are right now you're kind of like you're okay i've experienced this in this way in this manner for so long that i don't even know what i can bring in or create space for what i want to bring in in my next step 
So let's kind of look at what your spirit wants you to do. And I bring that sucker in. Because what I see is like your, your energy, because you let go of this big old load, and it looks like a lot of female energy, but um, mostly female energy. <laughs> so um, this green, like you're sitting here like, okay, a lot cleared around your heart. So this green is just giving you freedom, like this freedom to kind of go back to you again. Like, what is it that you love to do? What is it that you want to, like, you're showing me, like, these images, like, when you were a teenager, like, in between 17 and 20, like, what you've done in, in that time. Like, oh, I want to go back to that. Like, I want to try that out. And I want to, like, see, if, like, this is what I want to do. I don't know if you're a musician or you do anything with music or any of that kind of stuff, but something along in that line. Um like thing, yeah, you're you're just wanting to like kind of revisit some places and see, okay, do I want to do this again? Is this what are, like things that you've forgotten, things that you've um you wanted to do, but you had to put them on the side for whatever reason that you had to put them on the side for? It looks like for like family because you had children or you know wives or you know, so you kind of like put that there. Right. And what it comes down to, you just want to be free. You just want to just free, like rock and roll and just free whatever, like what you want to do. Like being able to like, a friend, a buddy calls you like, hey, you want to hang out? Yeah, sure. And just go and just go and like not necessarily drop all your responsibilities, but just be able to be like, yeah, I can do that for myself. Yeah, I, I want to go and hang out with you. Right. I want to Iron check it out. <laughs> Ironically enough, a friend from high school who I hung out with like literally all the time just came on live and and so it was like hilarious. Like I've I've been talking to him off and on through Facebook throughout the years, but like we used to hang out and do all kinds of stupid shit together, and so it was just kind of funny that he came on right in the middle of this. So, um, hi, Mike. <laughs> there you go. You guys need to connect. You guys need to go and do it. You guys need to go do it. Yeah. So around that time frame, wherever you, you guys were friends or whatnot, that's kind of like things that you want to kind of revisit. Does it necessarily, this is what you want to be, what you want to be. You just want to revisit that part of you. Right. And see like, oh, is, does this resonate with me now? Is this what I can do and chill and hang and not, you know. But the biggest thing here for you is not to like, there is some piece here where you feel that if you did do this, you will neglect your responsibility. You won't be able to accomplish what you want because you're going over there and having some fun. <laughs> no, you can have both. You don't have to like struggle between the two. That's actually going to really help you a lot. Like you just going out and having fun. Yeah, I definitely don't do that a lot. Um. <laughs> yeah, you definitely need you definitely need to do that. Yeah, because that's going to really help this green on what you want to create and what you want you're making space for to really anchor in. Because now you created the space for it, so now what you want to do with it? What do you want to fill it up with? And it's going to be anything that you want. And it's not something like, oh, John, you need to do this. No, John, I think you should do this. No, it has to be something that you want to do. Right. I see a lot like going out, like either hiking, camping, doing some nature stuff. Um, Kind of. I mean, I'm not really a big hiker. We did camp when I was younger a lot, but yeah. Yeah, I just see you just sitting in nature, like next to a lake or under some trees, just you just being in nature is what, you know, does it have to be, you know, like a camping weekend dress? No, I just see you just like being outdoors, just out, just being outside. That's really going to help you get like, it's, it's going to help you get clarity on what you need, what your next steps are. I don't know. You got any questions or anything for me before? Um, uh, no, uh, going back to the music thing, I mean, I listen to a lot of music and I used to write a lot of short stories and stuff like that when I was younger and tried to be like Weird Al and write my own parodies to songs and stuff. So, um, <laughs> I remember sitting, uh, in my room listening to the records. Yes, we had a record player still and I would be listening to like Michael Jackson and writing my own shit. So yeah, it was kind of funny, but yeah. 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 That brings out your, your your kooky, funny, weird side of you that you like, um, yeah, that you have. 
Right. And it's and it's a beautiful because I can see like you reconnecting to that part of you that's actually going to get you out of your shell being shy. So. <laughs> yes, yes, I am shy. Very shy. <laughs> yes, yes. So that's actually going to help you come out more. So that will help you to embrace that so that you can just be, you know. So it's, it doesn't have to mean that you have to be on stage or anything. It's just like when you're around people, especially like a group or a crowd or just being out and, and you, people see you, you just be, feel more comfortable in your body and in your skin because, you know, yeah, you won't be as shy or as right. timid. And then because that keeps you from really taking steps and leaps of like, oh, hey, this is what I want to do and saying yes to things that you want to do. Yeah, it looks like this is going to be a really good year for you to just kind of explore that and like getting out there more. Like I see you being out there more. Yeah, it looks, this year looks really, uh, it's a great self-discovery of you, the new you. The, the Not new as far as like it's, it wasn't there. It's like, it's more like a new you of your being of your your deep soul of like just reverent like hey you remember me you remember me john (laughs) like you said you felt a lot of female energy and stuff uh before uh my mom had passed away probably what is like two years now i don't remember it's a year and a half or so so yeah i don't know if a lot of that was was that because we weren't very close before she passed and uh i know i felt really guilty about it and stuff before and not being able to really say goodbye and all of that fun stuff. She uh, lived in Idaho. I always want to say Utah, but it's Idaho. She lived in Idaho. So my brother, sister, and I obviously drove up to go and take care of all of that stuff back in whenever it was. I don't remember. It's been a while. Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, I want to say last year, but I could be wrong. So, yep. yeah. No, that's definitely what I was seeing, a, a female pain. And, yes, it rooted in your mother. But it also transpired into your relationships with female women as well. And it looks like that's something that you – that's the biggest chunk that you've been moving out. Like, it looks like her death, you grieving for that and, you know, being okay with how everything is has been taking you this long. It's it's taking you to this moment to get to this new step in, in your life so that you, and yeah, it looks like that's something, you're right on track with that. What are you noticing? What are you feeling right now with your energy and with your space? I don't know. I feel lighter. Um, <laughs> definitely. Uh, obviously trying hard not to cry. But oh. yeah, uh, <laughs> let it go. <laughs> no, we're live. I'm not crying on live. You get to see these tears. I'm just joking. <laughs> All right, John. Well, maybe the best is the great spirit. You look like you are done. Completely. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate You're it. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> yes, of course. Absolutely. Thank you, Ashley, for throwing him in there. <laughs> She was going to do it sooner or later. Yeah. (laughs) And being open. Okay. So, to be fair to all the people that are watching, don't think that I threw John under the bus. They're like, whoa. No, you didn't. What the heck? You did it. So, John very much wanted to have that connective reading with Janice, but he is very uh, timid about speaking up about that. So, (laughs) everybody knows I could talk my ass off. So, I was like, hey, I'll speak for you. (laughs) Yeah. No, it was great. That's awesome. I'm just glad that, like, the first one I, I worked with you, and then now I get to work with you. I'm like, yes, a female and a male. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, that was awesome and amazing. So powerful. Now, I have a, a final wrap up question for you, Miss Janice. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I'm trying to think of the best way to say this. We noticed that tribes are where we tend to see a lot of spirituality, a lot of that belief and faith in connecting to the unseen and the unknown and um, how that relates directly to our core, to our energy. And we see that among so many types, types of spiritual people, no matter where they're located. It's a common theme. It's a common connection with the earth and beyond. 
where do you think that comes from? Like why during that moment in time or that type of environment, why do you think that is when we are at our most or have been at our most? Because it seems like before that it wasn't as like, or maybe we just didn't write about it. And after that it was, like you said, kind of conquered out. So we seem to be returning back to this like, belief system and spirituality, but also into the metaphysical world. But why do you think it was in the tribes that we found that like the most prevalent? Well, if you really think and go back, our true core, core human beingness is from caveman, right? And that's a tribe already. So regardless what nationality you are, what culture you are, when it comes on that deep soul level, we are originally from there, okay? Where the men went out, they hunted, they um, they provided food, the women, they stayed home, they gathered, nurture, right? And so from that moment, there was no other references but to like, be connected. So it goes down to that masculine and that feminine energy and then connecting into that. And then as we evolved, we came into like spirituality we came into connecting with the energy because surely back in the day they came and they connect to like the fire they connected to like the nature elements right fire the wind the earth the water so even though they didn't label it as spirituality it was spiritual is when you can connect in that that sense nowadays being spiritual isn't like being tribe and being stuck because sometimes being in a tribe it could be like oh we're gonna keep you safe we're gonna keep you stuck you gotta stay in this right in this area but it's finding your own authority and your own sovereignty as a sovereign being first of all within the tribe within the people within because now we're creating our own tribes right we're creating pe- like-minded people that we want to associate, we want to connect to, as well as our own family tribes. So when we come in into our bodies, the karma is from the family tribe, family lineage. So as a spirit, you come in, you got your soul agreement from your spirit. Okay, this is what we want to learn. This is what we want to do. This is what we want to experience. So we create the family so that we learn that experience, which is a tribe in some sense. Uh, regardless if you look at it that way or not. And then what we're doing is we're unlearning those belief systems so that we can get back to a um, natural state of like, what do we come in here to do? What were we meant here to do? You know, are we meant to carry this baggage around for the rest of our life? Or are we meant to like carry the shame and the blame for the rest of the family and for the world, you know, and the fear from the world? No. You know, we come here to experience and to have joy and connect and love and share, but we got to clear all that shit. <laughs> but I, yeah, so I hope I kind of answered it, um, you know. There's something that you said that stuck out to me about like the caveman days and um, the one thing that really like hit me hard when you were talking was this idea of destruction. And you're like, there weren't really things out there to distract us. And holy moly, don't we have a lot of distractions? Um, everything, anything, distraction, just like boop, 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 boop. And yeah, I think that we have gone away from being in the moment, in the present moment. I, I notice that most in animals, right? If you've ever just sat there and watched animals, birds fly, not because they're like, I'm supposed to fly and I have to fly. They just fly. And like bees, like, yes, they have their work, but they're still just being, right? And I feel like a lot of animals live in just that present moment. So they're ever aware. It's like their senses are so heightened, but they are so in that moment. Like by being that deeply connected into yourself and that moment, you are also connected to the entire earth around you, which is why I think animals can sense earthquakes and tornadoes and other things much sooner than we can. They are so much more connected 
So um, to your point, it's, it's interesting. And someone in the comments also said, like, we're all waking up in that sense of inside. I think we've all, like, we read about it in, watch it in movies for the decades and decades and centuries. Uh, not movies for centuries, but the books. <laughs> and we hear about people always trying to find their purpose. What is the purpose of life? What is my purpose? And it, it, so I feel like it's because there's that inner feeling. There's something missing. There's something I'm not connected to. So we look, 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 look. And it's, is it under a rock? Is it under, the, it's like, no, it's in you. And it's just being able to pause, hard stop, and be in your present moment inside of yourself in a way that does connect you all the way through your feet into the ground, all the way through your head up into the sky, all the way out your skin into the earth. And it's like, to me, I'm still trying to learn how to pause and do that. But like one of our recent guests said, I'm always five steps ahead of myself. I'm like, I'm always thinking too far forward. And I think oftentimes people also get stuck far back and it's like just pulling it in to be in that center present moment, which I wonder if that's where our spiritual tribes were able to be more in that present moment. Um, I don't know, but yes, everything you said just resonates. You always resonate, oh, thank Denise. You. I'm <laughs> always like, please tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, yeah, it's, I love what you said about all of that. And it is in the present moment. But because, you know, I love Kung Fu Panda, you know, <laughs> when it when it says like, when you're in the future, right, it's a mystery. When you're in the present, it's a gift. And I might be botching this because but I remember him saying that. But if, if you're in the past, you know, if you're too far in the path and it creates worry, fear, guilt, resentment because you're trying to fix something in the past, right? You're trying to try to hash something out because that's keeping you away from the present moment. But if you're in anxiety or if you're worrying about something, then that means your energy is all in the future. And that keeps you out of the present moment because the only thing that you can look forward to is right now and the next moment. And and this past hour and 27 minutes, we all unfolded the next present moment by us just coming together, having this conversation, and we just unfolded and created something from this present, from each present moment, from this last and a half hour, hour and a half. Isn't that beautiful? I love it so much. <laughs> yeah, right? And we created something magical and John got a healing and we got to talk about all of this and people came in the room and we finally got the live going. So we <laughs> right. got to cultivate all of this with other people, not just us three on here, but other people that was chiming in. So right. we all got to create this amazing experience just by being in the present moment. Yeah, and I feel like even though I can see you and I can see John, like, like you said, the people contribute in the, in the live, it's like your beautiful energy also comes through. I mean, I could go on and on of all these people that have stopped in and what they contribute, the thoughtfulness and, um, care that they're putting into it. Like it translates, it comes through and we're all in this present moment together. And I love it. And I love Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> Yes. Right. <laughs> I love it too. Right. Reference Frozen, Kung Fu Panda. Like life is all about those references. Whatever helps you understand, right? Whatever helps right. you relate. Yeah. Yes. And everybody relates. They look at things different. Is it wrong or right? No. That's just how your interpretation of life is. You know, and that is so beautiful because then we get to contribute to the bigger cause, to the bigger thing. Like what today, this is a bigger ripple effect. We don't know what, how, after this life, how it's going to affect someone. Just like your mother, I didn't know how that was going to transpire into like getting your mom to awaken. It's That's just so beautiful. So, so beautiful. That's like the magic, you know, of all of this. 
and, and you feel it. You feel it. I feel like anybody who stops and is in just that moment where you are ever present, like you are just present, you feel the moment. You connect into that present where there's no distraction. There's no what I have to do five minutes from now, what I did five minutes ago. I am right now. That is a magical feeling too. It, so. It's powerful. It's such, if that's one thing you guys take away from this, like even just practicing how to be in the present moment, it takes work, but more that once you start recognizing all these little, little influence that's going on inside of you, the feelings that you're getting, you know, stop. Like what Ashley was saying, pause and then reflect on that. And then you can come right back to the present moment. The best way to be in the present moment is like blink a couple of times. <laughs> or sing or <laughs> and you make a really good point like I for me to feel my present moment I, I have to feel it because I'm a feeler so for me it's how do I feel but that may not work for everybody in fact I would say for people who are more visual because everybody knows I'm not a good visualizer but for people that are more visual most of you that are listening and some that don't like if you've got it you have a crystal Pick up your crystal, look at your crystal, take a moment just to discover what colors, what shine, what light is picking up on it, and just take a moment to look at it. Or if you're not a crystal person because you're like, Ashley, I'm curious, but I'm not really all in on the woo-woo yet, pick up something else. Maybe it's a water bottle, not trying to do brand placement here. And take like, don't read because that might take you out of your moment, but maybe look for colors. How does it feel? Is it cold in your hand? Is it not? Like really stop and connect with that moment. Like however that connection works. Yeah. Even like you said, go outside and look at something, you know, Just look yeah. at a, a sunset. Somebody had brought that up like a while, you know, yesterday, a couple days ago, whatever on our last one. But oh, yeah, sunset, sunrise, sunset. sunrise. Yeah. Christy did. And that's what it was. So, yeah. Go out there and look at that, you know? I mean, get mm -hmm. lost in that moment because mm -hmm. it's freaking amazing regardless. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you know what? And I, If you're really stuck in it, I always say call a friend. Like, tell them, ask them to tell you a joke. You know, get into amusement. Get into laughter. Get back into that, like, as a child, you know? And, like, yeah, I will call a friend sometimes when I really can't get out of it. And, and like, hey, just tell me a joke. Tell me something funny. Or just I have them send me funny memes. There's so much of that on on social media, just funny things. And I just send that to my friends or they send it to me. And it just, like, gets me out of it. Yeah. Find your joy. Find what makes you happy. Yes, and get a friend involved. <laughs> Yes. Get, a friend involved. get the memes involved. Just be careful, all my lovely friends. <clears throat> be careful with the social media. Um, not necessarily from an energetic perspective, but oftentimes when we are on social media scrolling, we are disassociating. And we want to be connected in ourselves. So just remember, we want to oh, yeah. associate with ourselves. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Find what brings you joy and live in that moment. And mm -hmm. we love you, Janice. We appreciate you coming on today. There are a lot of people on here that really loved your energy and the things you had to say. So if they want to reach out to you, follow you, contact you, where can they find you? You can find me on Facebook, Janice Recolon. And then I have all my stuff on there. And you can just message me from there if you want to book a session with me, similar to what I did with John tonight. So I do that. Um, if you want a session, just message me, get a hold of me through there, and then we can start a chit-chat talk and get you in into my books. And then if you want to learn more tools or training or any of that, I also have a Facebook group so you can go in and I can teach, show you some energy tools like rounding and being in the present moment more and supporting you in that way. I do have a Facebook group that I also offer trainings and tools and much, 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 much more. So, and I, if anything, I just love to connect. You know what I mean? Just chit chat, connect. I love connecting with people. I love just meeting with people, connecting with you, you know? So just reach out. Thank you so much for coming on. I really love, I like, having you on you know we're gonna bug you to have you on again and again and again 
course, yes. I love to, I love to, I love to. Please, please, please. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and thank you everyone for coming in and chiming in and being part of this. Thank you. All right, John Thomas. Let me wrap it up. <laughs> wrap like it up. Music. Time to wrap it up. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Janice, again for coming on. And thank you for the reading. That was amazing. I appreciate it very, very much. Anytime. And thank you to all of our listeners and watchers for listening and watching this episode of Three Haunted Podcast with your host. I'm John Thomas, I think. I am Ashley Lunar Goddess. And if you have any comments, questions, or episode suggestions, please feel free to email us at threehauntedpodcast at gmail.com. If you haven't done so already, slackers, just kidding. Please like, follow, and subscribe to all of our social media. You don't want to miss one absolutely freaking amazing moment. Until next time.